Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you that we can again gather here this morning. We thank you that you brought uh, Sister Manuela back safely. And I pray now as we open your word, that you would be present among us, that you would revive our hearts, dass du unsere Herzen erwächst and strengthen our faith und unseren Glauben stärkst and help us to uh, grasp these uh, truths und hilf uns diese Wahrheiten zu begreifen that we might exercise faith towards you dass wir Glauben ähm, gegenüber dir ausüben mögen and that you might lead us to have true penitence und dass du uns ähm, zur wahren Buße führst that your spirit can fill our flagging hearts dass dein Geist unsere Herzen ähm, erfüllen kann. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Und wir bitten das im Namen Jesu. Amen. 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 Flagging house. Yeah. That means you're weak. Okay. Um. Okay, this morning I want to just go through this, um, go through the harvest. Also heute Morgen möchte ich durch die Ernte durchgehen. Oh, because I mean, uh, Sister Lucia asked me some questions on this yesterday. Bei gestern wurde ich ein paar Fragen gestellt darüber. And also, it would be in line with what uh, Lawrence was doing last night. Und das ist auch in Übereinstimmung mit dem, was Bruder Lorenz gestern Abend gemacht hat. So. On that last night, we were looking at how the the similarities between the trumpets and the, the plagues. Right? Gestern haben wir uns die Ähnlichkeit zwischen den Posaunen und den Plagen angeschaut. And we know that the the trumpets are events that are taking place in the Sunday Law crisis. Und wir wissen, dass die Posaunen Ereignisse sind, die in der Sonntagsgesetzkrise stattfinden. Okay, but um, so now. Uh, so what I'm doing is I put here uh, trumpets representing these uh, seven plagues in type there. Also ich habe jetzt hier Posaunen hingeschrieben und das stellt eben diese sieben Posa äh, sieben Plagen im Typus dar. Now I just want to make the point that not I'm not saying that they're in a chronological order there, right? Mm. Because it's just a symbol. Also ich möchte nicht sagen, dass sie in einer chronologischen Reihenfolge sind, weil das ist eben nur ein Symbol. Although, when you when you compare them, they they they're in the same order. If you. Um, also, obwohl wenn man sie vergleicht, dann sind sie in derselben Reihenfolge. And, and, and I don't know, I don't know specifically um, what that means for us, it, it, but it doesn't matter at this point. Also, ich weiß jetzt noch nicht, was das um, für uns jetzt bedeutet an diesem Punkt, aber das. Okay, anyway, um, if we go to um, Matthew 13. Gehen wir zu Matthäus 13. Um, Fiona, can you take that, please? Okay, verse 38. Matthäus 13, Vers 38. It says, The field is the world, the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil, the harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. Right, so, so when's the harvest? When is the end? The, the end of the world, right? And according to verse 38, when's the harvest? Gemäß Vers 38, when is the end? According to verse 38 that we just read, when is the harvest? The information is all there. Yeah, 
that, right? When the two classes are separated, yes. right? When the two classes are separated. I'm not asking any trick questions. The information is there. There's two classes, right? Also, das, the information is there. There are two classes. So when the two classes are ready to be separated, that's when the sickle goes in, right? Also, when the two classes are ready to be separated, or bereit sind getrennt zu werden, dann geht die Sichel ein. And in this particular illustration, who are the two classes? Und in dieser bestimmten Darstellung, wer sind die zwei Klassen? The wheat and the tares, right? Das Weizen und der, der, äh, der Weizen und das Unkraut. So, wheat and tares, is that in agreement with the harvest? Und Weizen und Unkraut, ist das in Übereinstimmung mit der Ernte? Right, yeah, because you harvest wheat, right? Ja, weil du erntest ja den Weizen. Okay, so now we go to Matthew 24, verse 3. Gehen wir zu Matthäus 24 und Vers 3. So it says, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? So what are they asking for? Also nach was fragen sie? When is the harvest? Also wann ist die Ernte? Right, we just read that in Matthew 39, the harvest is the end of the world. Wir haben ja gerade in Matthäus 13, Vers 39 gelesen, dass die Ernte das Ende der Welt ist. But there's also, the prior to them revealing that, it said, what is the sign of thy coming, right? Aber sie fragen dann auch noch, was ist das Zeichen deines Kommens? So the sign of thy the coming is linked to the harvest. Also das Zeichen seines Kommens ist verbunden mit der Ernte. Right? Yes. Okay. So, Matthew 24 is referencing the Sunday Law Crisis. Also, right? Matthäus 24 nimmt Bezug auf die Sonntagsgesetzkrise. Okay, and in verse 29, Vers 29, it says, immediately after the tribulation of those days. So, where... If we are, if we're taking Matthew 24 in a in a as a chronology, where are we when we come to verse 29? Also, wenn wir Matthäus 24 um, chronologisch anschauen, wo wo würde dann Vers 29 uns hinbringen? Say that again, Mary. Okay, beginning of the seventh plague. Why? Zum Anfang der siebten Plage und warum? Okay, the the. Okay, just go to just go to Matthew twenty-four. Gehen wir noch mal zu Matthäus vierundzwanzig. So in this verse that we just read, the tribulation of those days. Where's the tribulation? What's it referring to? Also, auf was bezieht sich hier diese Trübsal? No, that's wrong answer. There's, it's the 1260, yes, but which 1260? It's the 1260, but which 1260s? There's many 1260s. Right in the Sunday Law Crisis, which one is it? Und da gibt's viele 1260er in der Sonntagsgesetzkrise. Welche davon ist das? See, I, I tell you, we go through this so many times, but we're not sure ourselves on these points. Go, Maris, which 1260 is it? It begins at this. Okay, so 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 where does it begin then? Also mit dem and reference on on here. Wo das Dekret anfängt? Beginning of the sixth. Yes. Right here. Also am Anfang der sechsten Frage. Okay, because we're, 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 remember I mentioned we're doing this as in a chronology, right? Also erinnert euch, wir ähm, legen das ja jetzt chronologisch aus. So here's the Sunday law crisis, they come to the end, seven plagues pour out. Also right? hier ist die Sonntagsgesetzkrise, man kommt zum Ende und dann werden die sieben Plagen ausgegossen. That's the chronology of Matthew 24, das right? Das ist die Chronologie von Matthäus 24. Right, and then you come to the... The sixth plague, right, and that would be um, uh, 
verse 20. Also dann kommt man zur sechsten Plage und das wäre dann Vers 20. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day, for then shall be great tribulation. Right? That's the sixth plague. Also das ist dann, da wird große Trübsal sein, das ist die sechste Plage. Such as was not since the beginning of this world to the time no shall never shall be. And except those days should be shortened. Right? So, there's the point where it's shortened. Right? Also da ist der Punkt, wo es verkürzt wird. So, you have... Um, this marks mm -hmm. um, you go to verse okay, <coughs> verse 15. Gehen wir zu Vers 15 when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet takes you to Daniel 11 right? Das bringt dich zu Daniel 11. and Daniel 11 31 is marking the 1260. Daniel 11, Vers 31, markiert die 1260. So you have 1260 represents the seven plagues, right? Man hat hier die 1260, das Right, but those days shall be short, right? Speaking about this, right? Diese Tage werden verkürzt werden, das spricht dann hier. Okay, so, um, so we go back to the the notes on Matthew 24, 29. Also gehen wir um, zu Matthäus 24, Vers 29 zurück. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give a light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heavens shall be shaken. So where does it take you to? Wohin bringt dich das? Shaken of the heavens and the earth, right? Zur Erschütterung von Himmel und Erde. It says, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. What shall appear? Was wird erscheinen? The sign, right? Das Zeichen. Because if we just go back to verse 3 now. Wenn wir noch mal zu Vers 3 zurückgehen. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Two things, right? Und zwei Dinge. Right? Two things, the sign and the end. Und zwei Dinge, das Zeichen und das Ende. So, immediately when you go to verse 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days, that's when it's cut short, right? Okay, because if you just go back to verse 22, because it says, and except those days should be shortened, which days? The great tribulation that begins here, right? So this 1260 gets shortened here, right? Also diese 1260 wird dann hier verkürzt. So it's bringing you to, to this point, uh, verse 30. Also es bringt uns zu diesem Punkt, Vers 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, right? Dann wird das Zeichen des Menschensohnes am Himmel erscheinen. So, and Matthew 24, verse 3, says, When shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? Right? So, brings you to the sign, right? In Matthew 24, verse 3, stand ja, wann soll das Zeichen deines Kommens sein und des Ende der Welt und es bringt uns zum Zeichen. Okay, and that is marking the first place where the harvest is marked, right? Und das markiert dann auch denselben den ersten Platz, wo die Ernte, die erste Ernte markiert Okay, ist. and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Right? So, when the sign appears, what does he then do? Also wenn das Zeichen erscheint, was macht er dann? Yeah. 
Ja, ich sende his angels to gather. Er right? sendet seine Engel um zusammen. Right? So the the sending of the angels to gather is in relation connection with the sign appearing, right? Also das Senden der Engel, dass sie sammeln, ist in Verbindung mit diesem Zeichen, das erscheint. Everybody see that? Right? Kann das jeder sehen? Okay, we'll come back to those points a, a, a bit later. Und später werden wir noch mal zu diesen Punkten zurückkommen. However, when we go back to Matthew 24, right, verse 15. Zurück zu Matthäus 24 und Vers 15 gehen. We are, we've been through this, right, that um, Sister White applies it two ways, right? What's the other way she applies it? Wir haben das schon angeschaut, um, dass Ellen White das auf zwei verschiedene Arten anwendet. Und was ist die andere Anwendung? Right, she takes all those verses from verse 15 forward down to the harvest and sticks it in the Sunday law, right? Sie nimmt diese Verse ab von Matthäus 24, Vers 15 bis, also vorwärts und ähm, setzt das an das Sonntagsgebet. Bis zur Ernte und setzt das an das Sonntagsgebet. Okay, so that would give us the same here, right? So you have 1260. Das würde uns dasselbe dann auch hier geben. Da Daniel 11, 31 forward, right? Daniel 11, Vers 31 und forward. Right, and then it would bring you to this great tribulation, dann right? Würde es uns zu dieser großen Trübsal bringen. And it would bring you to here, to the sign, right? Und dann würde es uns hierher zum Zeichen bringen. But if we come to this point, where, where would the sign be? Aber wenn wir zu diesem Punkt kommen, wo wäre das Zeichen? With this little box here, where would the sign be? Wir haben ja diese kleine Box hier, wo wäre das Zeichen? No way. Also nicht am Anfang. No, come on, what's connected with the... Don't we have the two harvests there? I thought that is... No, no, no. So the sign then... No, no, there's something that typifies them, but there's not two harvests there, right? Also da schattet es das voraus, aber hier gibt es nicht zwei Arten. Okay, you have the two temple cleansings or the two voices, which would parallel that, but it's not two harvests. Man hat ja die zwei Tempelreinigungen und die zwei Stimmen, die sind parallel dazu, aber es ist nicht die zwei Ernten. Come on, would you, I just asked you the question, what's connected with the sign? Also, was ist verbunden mit dem Zeichen? Him sending his angels to harvest, also, right? Also, seine Engel zur Ernte sind. And What what is the harvest? Und was ist die Ernte? What, what we just already spoke about. What the very first verses we okay. So where are the two classes separated? Die Ernte ist die Trennung der zwei Klassen und wo werden die zwei Klassen getrennt? Remember, the 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 wheat and the tares must grow together until the harvest, right? Denk daran, das Weizen und das Unkraut müssen zusammenwachsen bis zur Ernte. They must be fully developed, Sie right? Müssen völlig entwickelt werden. Okay, so what ripens the harvest? Und was reift die Ernte? The lot of rain. Der Spätregen. So when can the harvest go in? Also wann kann die Ernte ein, reingehen? After the lot of rain, right? Nach dem Spätregen. So the lot of rain must fall on that they must, one group must reject it, the other group must accept it to be fully ripe. Right? Der Spätregen muss ausgegossen werden und eine Gruppe muss es ähm, ablehnen und die anderen annehmen, damit es völlig reif sein kann. Okay, so now ask the question again. Where is the sign? Und deswegen frage ich nochmal die Frage, wo ist das Zeichen? Sorry? <coughs> why, why is it beginning and the end? Just, just stick with what we've gone through so far, right? The, 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 the answer is here, right? The latter rain must fall, right? And it, it's, it, there's a sign, and then there's the end. There are two things, right? Also der Spätregen, der muss ja fallen, und dann gibt es ja das Zeichen und das Ende. Das sind zwei Dinge. Okay, where's the end? Wo ist das Ende? The end, right? Das Ende. The end is the end, right? Das Ende ist das Ende. So the sign comes before the end, also right? Das Zeichen kommt vor dem Ende. 
So we've already looked at this. The sign is accompanied with angels putting in the sickle, right? Wir haben das ja schon gesehen, dass das Zeichen begleitet ist mit den Engeln, der die Sichel einwirft. And they can't do that until after the latter rain has fallen, right? Sie können das nicht tun, bis der Spätregen gefallen ist. So where where does the latter rain fall? Und wo fällt der Spätregen? Just does the latter rain fall here? Right. So at the end of that period, when the latter rains fallen, what are they going to do? Yeah. And am Ende in dieser Zeitspanne, wenn der Spätregen gefallen ist, was werden sie tun? These are not trick questions. If the latter rains fallen, what would then for the 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 wheat be? Also, wenn das der Spätregen gefallen ist, was wäre dann? So if it's ripe, what are they going to do? Er ist dann reif und was, wenn er reif ist, was werden sie tun? They're going to put in the sickle, right? I'm, I'm not asking trick questions, just follow the logic, right? So they can't put the sickle in until the end of here, right? Sie können nicht die Sichel reinwerfen bis hier zum Ende. And this is the first group, right? Das ist die erste Gruppe. Right? So what I want us to see, this would be the Sign, right? Not the end yet. It's the sign, right? And the end would be here. Okay. So the sign of his coming is when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven, right? And the angels begin. The harvest, Und right? Die Engel fangen die Ernte an. And that's an agreement with their understanding. So the first group get harvested here, right? Das ist eine Übereinstimmung mit dem, was wir verstehen. Die erste Gruppe wird dann hier geerntet. Okay. So you see. In the sense, it's the end for the first group. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's still not the end. It's not. It's not the, the second coming of Christ, right? Also es ist sozusagen das Ende für die erste Gruppe, aber das ist eben nicht die Wiederkunft Christi. Also es ist noch nicht it's not, it's not the end according to Matthew 24. That's the point. Also, it's not the end according to Matthew 24. Okay. What, why not? Because it says the end of the world is the harvest, right? So yes, but the, ha the, ha the, the end is when it's... The harvest with the special resurrections. So okay. okay, but... Because we the looked at this, that the end is like a... Time period, time period. Right. But the end is when it's finished. Das Ende ist wie eine Zeitspanne, aber es ist, auch wenn es dann vollendet ist. Look, it says, what shall be the sign of coming at the end of the world, right? The, the, the point is that the, the end of the world is when Christ arrives, right? That's when he destroys the, the, everything. Right? Das Ende der Welt ist ja, wenn Christus ankommt und er dann alles zerstört. It's when the harvest is complete. Das ist, wenn die Ernte abgeschlossen ist. Begins. So. You can you can make that argument all you, all you want, right? The, the fact is, this is look. Can you look at this, right? It says in Ezekiel seven, the end has come. The end has come. E yes. So the end is there, but then it says to the future, I will pour my fury. Uh, right. So it's still it's still to come, right? No, it is come. It's come. Yeah, no, I know it's come, but the, the end is, is not complete. No, it's not. It's a time we're, period. We're not arguing that there's a time period, but the, I'm, I'm referring to the end when everything's complete. It's here, right? Because they're asking, what shall be the sign of their coming and the end of the world, right? Okay, you can, you can argue that it's a time period. I'm not arguing that point. I, I want to agree that this is the end of the first group, but the end is there. Ich bestreite nicht, dass das Ende eine Zeitspanne ist und ich stimme auch damit überein, dass das Ende für die erste Gruppe hier ist, aber es ist erst hier dann ähm, vollständig. Oh, oh, matter, right? I'm, I'm not going to get into an argument over semantics. The point is they're making is that the, the harvest is a time period, right, which has a beginning point and an end point, right? Der Punkt, der gemacht wird, ist eben, dass die Ernte eine Zeitspanne ist und es hat einen Anfang und einen Endpunkt. The sign of his coming is not his is he's not there yet that's the point i'm making das zeichen seines kommens da ist er ja noch nicht da das ist der punkt den ich mache right 
or we now want to say that he, he is there now. No, he's not, you know, the point is he's not there, right? So we're just getting into silly arguments now, right? So... Well, there's two harvests there, yeah, because you said that the first harvest that Yes, well, well, come, come on to that, right? That's what I'm saying. Look, this is the first group, right? Okay. But the first group is complete there, right? Hence why there's a harvest, right? You can't put in the sickle if it's not complete. That's why I'm asking this question. Where... The, the sign of his coming is linked to angels putting in the sickle. So that's why I'm asking, where can it be? Okay, it's the sign of his coming, but he's not there yet. But yet at the same time, he's put it in the sickle, so something's complete, right? Okay, come on, that's not difficult. The sign of his coming is not yeah. his coming. He's not there yet, right? Right. It's before he comes. Right? Okay. But the point is that he's putting in the sickle, so something has completed, right? Or like one group has completed. Okay, go, go to the, this next quote. And it's about the wheat and the tears. Right? So we just read an agreement that the harvest... But when he puts in the sickle, it's where two classes are separated, the wheat and the tears, right? We have already said that when he puts the sickle, it's where two classes are separated, where two classes are separated. Okay, so it says, God has a church upon the earth who has chosen people who keep his commandments. He is leading not stray offshoots, not one here and one there, but a people. The truth is a sanctifying power. But the church militant is not the church triumphant. There are tares among the wheat. So, what makes the church triumphant? Das macht die Gemeinde siegreich. Separation of tares and wheat. Yes, I, I, I know what you mean, but, okay, yes, you're right. But I will just, you know, you're not wrong what you're saying, just that the, the maybe it's my question is bad. The, the answer that I, that I would uh, would understand would be that it's when his church has no tears in it, yes. right? So, um, das ist, wenn eben die Gemeinde kein Unkraut mehr in sich hat. Okay, so when the church is only wheat and the tears have been separated, then it's the, the, the church triumphant, also, wenn right? Wenn die Gemeinde nur noch, nur noch Weizen ist um, und der, das Unkraut getrennt wurde, dann ist es eben die triumphierende Gemeinde. Okay, so... Um, go to the next quote from Acts of the Apostles. It says, But near the close of earth's harvest, a special bestowal of spiritual grace is promised to prepare the church for the coming of the Son of Man. Right? So, a special bestowal of grace has to fall upon you before Christ comes. Right? Ausgießung seiner Gnade muss kommen, ähm, before, before, Christ ah, comes. before Christus kommt. This outpouring of the Spirit is likened to the falling of the latter rain. So what must fall upon you before Christ can come? Also was muss auf dich fallen, bevor Christus kommen kann? The latter rain, Der right? So we've read many quotes before that the latter rain ripens the harvest, Wir right? haben viele Zitate zuvor gelesen, dass der Spätregen die Ernte reift. So, when Christ comes and you stand before him, if you've rejected the latter rain, right, you, you will not be ready for his coming, right? Wenn Christus kommt und du vor ihm stehst und du den Spätregen abgelehnt hast, dann wirst du nicht bereit sein für sein Kommen. Right? And it says, when the latter rain falls, many will neither 
Discern it nor receive it, right? Und es sagt, wenn der Spätregen fällt, werden es viele wieder erkennen und erhalten. And it's the exceeding bright light, right? Das, Different uh, illustrations, right? Und in das, auch das überhaus helle Licht in verschiedenen Darstellungen. So after the exceeding bright light's fallen, comes the harvest. Also nachdem das überhaus helle Licht gefallen ist, kommt die Ernte. Because now it will be determined who the two classes are, right? Weil dann wird bestimmt werden, wer die zwei Klassen sind. So if you just go back to the last quote that we we read. Gehen wir noch mal zurück zum letzten Zitat, das wir gelesen haben. It's we were reading this point. It says, but the church militant is not the church triumphant. There are tears among the wheat. Wilt thou then that we gather them up? Was the question of the servant, but the master answered, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tears, ye root up also the wheat with them. The gospel net draws not only good fish but bad ones as well as the Lord. As well, and the Lord only knows who are His, right? So, the exceeding bright light m must come first before it, it, everything's complete, right? What, what is the exceeding bright light? In, in another context. Yeah, it's the revelation. Uh, um, maybe, maybe it's just a bad question. Um, before Christ judges, he like for instance, he says in Isaiah, "What more could I have done for my vineyard?" Right. So, what is it? Also in Jesaja sagt er auch, "Was hätte ich mehr für mein Weinberg tun können?" Und was ist das? Yeah, it's the last chance. So therefore, what is it? <laughs> it's the greatest evidence. Was the one I look at, that, right? It's the greatest evidence that he can give, and if you reject that, there's nothing more that he can give you, right? All right. Okay. So, um, go back to the the next quote. Right? It says, but near the close of earth's harvest, the special bestowal of spiritual grace is promised to prepare the church for the coming of the Son of Man. This outpouring of the Spirit is likened to the falling of the latter rain. And it is for this added power that Christians are to send their petitions to the Lord of the harvest in the time of the latter rain. In response, the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain. He will cause to come down the rain, the former and the latter rain. That's in here, right? Because what are you doing here? You're pleading with him, deliver us, right? And what delivers you? The, the latter rain, right? Right? And, and, he, and he sends the former and the latter and it purges you from your sin lays you in the dust and you're now ready for his coming, right? Er sendet den frühen den Spätregen, das reinigt dich von deiner Sünde und legt dich in den Staub, damit du dann ähm, bereit bist für sein Kommen. Okay, last paragraph of this book. Letzter Absatz von diesem Zitat. It says, but unless the members of God's church today have a living connection with the source of all spiritual growth, they will not be ready for the time of reaping. Unless they keep their lamps trimmed and burning, they will fail of receiving added grace in times of special need. So what's that link it with? Also mit was verbindet das hier? The parable of the ten virgins, right? Mit dem Gleichnis der zehn Jungfrauen. I'll give you another illustration of this in a moment, right? Und um, gleich werde ich euch noch eine weitere Darstellung dafür geben. Okay, so next quote. Nächstes Zitat. Thus was the gospel brought to those who had been strangers and foreigners, making them fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. The conversion of Cornelius and his household was but the first fruits of a harvest to be gathered in. So what's the harvest likened unto? Also mit was wird die Ernte verglichen? What happened to Cornelius? Was geschah mit Cornelius? Right, so what's the harvest like in the Conversion, right? So being converted 
is the harvest, right? Also, wenn man bekehrt wird, das ist die Ernte. Can we see that? Can I see that scene? But the point, the point in linked with that here, it says that Cornelius was the first fruits, right? So the story of Cornelius is linking something to do with the first fruit, first fruits of something that is to come, right? Cornelius is verbunden mit diesen dieser Erstlingsfrucht, also etwas, was noch kommen soll. Right. So when you go to the Bible, the first fruits was it a harvest? Und wenn man zur Bibel geht, war die Erstlingsfrucht eine Ernte. Yeah. What were the first fruits? Ja, und was waren die Erstlingsfrüchte? Go to. We're talking natural here. Go, go to, go to um, Ruth. The book of Ruth, chapter 2. Also gehen wir zum Buch Ruth, Kapitel 2. It's in the notes, but it just follow it down. But it doesn't matter. You can just turn in your Bibles. Also Ruth, Ruth. Aber wir können auch in den Bibeln gehen. To 21 to 23. Also Ruth 2, Vers 21 bis 23. It says, and Ruth the Moabites said, he said unto me also, thou shalt keep fast by my young men until they have ended all my harvest. And Naomi said unto Ruth, her daughter-in-law, it is good, my daughter, that thou go out with his maidens, that they meet thee not in any other field. So she kept fast by the maidens of Boaz to glean unto the end of barley harvest, and of wheat harvest, and dwelt with her mother-in-law. How many harvests? Wie viele Ernten? Two. Two. Zwei. What's the first one? Was die erste? The barley harvest, die right? Die ersten Ernte. So, therefore, in relation to what we read beforehand, what's the barley harvest? Deswegen in Bezug auf das, was wir vorhin gelesen haben, was ist die gersten Ernte? Yes, it's the first fruits harvest, right? The first fruits harvest. It was always about the the barley harvest was the thing that marked the the, the beginning of the year. They had to look uh, the when the the closest time when the, the 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 sliver of the moon would appear closest to the barley harvest, right? Also, the im ersten Ernte das markierte den Anfang des Jahres und sie mussten dann immer um, schauen, also wann, um, the first sliver of the new moon. Yes, the wann die erste Sichel des Mondes um, zu sehen war. Also no, closest to the barley Und das am nächsten, am nächsten zu der ersten Ernte. Okay, right. So, two harvests, right? The first harvest is the first fruits. The second harvest would be the, the wheat harvest, right? Also, da sind zwei Ernten und die ähm, erste Ernte wäre eben die, die Erstlingsfrüchte, die Gerste und die zweite wäre We die Weizenernte. Okay, just a different illustration to lay on top, right? Also eine weitere Darstellung, die man darüber legt. Okay, so, at the harvest, in one sense, they're both wheat. Right? Und bei der Ernte in einem Sinne sind es ist ja beides Weizen. Okay, this illustration is just to show us the difference between these two harvests. Right? Und diese Darstellung soll uns einfach den Unterschied zwischen diesen beiden Ernten zeigen. Okay, so. Um, go, to, go back up to the next quote that was underneath the one to do with con conversion of Cornelius. Gehen wir jetzt zum nächsten Zitat, also unter dem Zitat, wo es um Cornelius ging. It says there have been and always will be tears among the wheat, the foolish virgins with the wise. So again, what does it link together here? Also mit was vergleicht es das? Verbindet es das wieder? The wheat and tears with the separation of the foolish and wise virgins, also right? Der Weizen und das Unkraut mit der Trennung von den Weisen und törichten Jungfrauen. So, go to the next quote. <coughs> Gehen wir zum nächsten Zitat. It says, the coming of Christ, as announced by the first angel's message, was understood to be represented by the coming of the bridegroom. 
the widespread reformation under the proclamation of his soon coming answered to the going forth of the virgins. In this parable, as in that of Matthew 24, two classes are represented. Right? So, parallels Matthew 24 with Matthew 25. Right. And Matthew 24, as we've just been looking at, right, is this lead you down to the seventh plague, right? Because at the beginning of the seventh plague, what appears? The sign, right? The sign. Okay, so. But those seven plagues are prefigured in the Sunday law crisis, right? So if we were to take the whole line, the, the virgins go forth here, right? First separation, right? And it leads you down to the second separation, right? Which is the harvest. Same illustration that we're just... Laying on here, right? Okay, so she's just lining up the wheat and tares with Matthew 25, with Matthew 24, showing you that it's all the same thing, right? Okay, so go to the next head in the Blessed Dead. Okay. So, in Revelation 14, verse 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Right? So, it's speaking about a special group of people, right? Spricht über eine besondere Gruppe von Leuten. The blessed dead. Die gesegneten Toten. Right? That are going to be resurrected because they they die from this point henceforth. Und die auferweckt werden, weil sie von diesem Punkt vorwärts sterben. Right? And this point henceforth in history was marking when the, the third angel's message began to sound. Und dieser right. Punkt um, und dann vorwärts, das markiert in der Geschichte, wo die dritte Engelsbotschaft dann anfing zu ertönen. She basically says all those that keep the Sabbath and just shortly after 1844 they began to keep the Sabbath. Right? Sie hat, also sie sagt, alle diejenigen, die den Sabbat gehalten haben und kurz nach 1844 haben sie angefangen, den Sabbat zu halten. Okay, so from, from the time that the Sabbath begins to be kept, all those that die in the third angel's message, that keep the Sabbath faithfully, are going to be, uh, are called the blessed dead. Called the blessed Sie werden die gesegneten Toten genannt. Right, so just let's go to this <coughs> next quote. Gehen wir zum nächsten Zitat. It said, I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yes, yeah, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. I hardly know what to say to you. The news of your wife's death was to me overwhelming. I could hardly believe it, and can hardly believe it now. God gave me a view last Sabbath night, which I will write. I saw that she was sealed, and would come up at the what? Voice. Voice of God, and stand upon the earth, and would be with the 144,000. So first of all, she quotes Revelation 14, verse 13. And then makes this statement, right? Zuerst zitiert sie Offenbarung 14, Vers 13 und dann macht sie dieses, ähm, diese, ja, diese Aussage. So she's going to be resurrected to stand with the 144,000, right? Also sie wird auferweckt, um mit den 144,000 zu stehen. Okay, so go now to Revelation 14. Gehen wir jetzt zu Offenbarung 14. <coughs> 
It says, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty-four thousand, having his father's name written in their forehead. What's written in their forehead? Which is the seal of God, right? And if you just, just confirm this, but just go to, back to Revelation 7 in your Bibles. In verse 4. It says, And I heard the number of them which were what? Sealed. And there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the uh, children of Israel. Right? So, if we go back to Revelation 14. Verse 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him 144,000 of his father's name written in their foreheads. So, she spoke about that woman, and what did she say about that woman? Sie hat über diese Frau gesprochen, und was hat sie über diese Frau gesagt? No, 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 on this point, what did she say about that woman? Über diesen Punkt, was hat sie da gesagt? She said she was sealed. Right? Sie sagt, sie war versiegelt. Right? And the seal of God is the Sabbath, right? Das Siegel Gottes ist der Sabbat. Right? So, she says she's sealed and she's going to stand with 144,000, right? Steht, dass sie versiegelt war und dass sie mit den 144,000 stehen wird. She doesn't say she's the 144,000, but she says she's going to stand with them, right? Also sie sagt nicht, dass sie... Ähm, also Teil der 144.000 ist, sondern dass sie mit ihnen stehen wird. Okay. So, uh, Vers 2. Uh, also Vers 2. And I heard a voice from heaven. Right? So, when was she going to be resurrected to stand with 144.000? Also, wann wird sie auferweckt werden, um mit den 144.000 zu stehen? At the voice of God, right? An der Stimme Gottes. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and the voice of a great thunder and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. When are they harping with their harps? Also, wann spielen sie auf ihren Harfen? Yes, Wenn but in relation to, to this what we're discussing. Wenn sie den Sieg errungen haben, aber in Bezug auf das, was wir diskutieren. When you harvest it, right? When you... Yeah. When, when you... Um, it's the deliverance, right? You're, you're harp in this heart because you're so joyous to have been freed from the sin, right? Wenn du geerntet wirst, ist eben die Befreiung, wenn du so glücklich bist, ähm, dass, äh, dass du von deiner Sünde befreit wurdest. Okay, so, verse uh, 3. Vers 3. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne and before the four beasts. So, the, ancient, the Israelites, when did they... Sing the new song. Und wann haben die Israeliten das neue Lied gesungen? Not. Okay. When they went through the Red Sea, then so. like when they went through the Red Sea, they sang this song, right? Sie durch das Rote Meer gegangen sind, da haben sie dieses neue Lied gesungen. Okay. And they sang as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders, and no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty-four thousand which were redeemed. From the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. They're what? Das sind sie. So where does it take you to? Parable of the ten virgins, das right? Zum der zehn okay, which is the, the, the separation of the wheat and tares, right? Auch die von und ist. These are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men being what? The first fruits. Right? Okay, so when we read about Cornelius, it said he's the first fruits of many. Right? And the first fruits was the barley harvest, right? So it's the first harvest, right? It's just as in the name, first fruits, the first harvest. Harvest, das ist right? ja auch im Namen Erstlingsfrucht, erste Ernte. So that woman, the blessed dead, are resurrected to stand at the first harvest. Also right? diese Frau, die äh, 
ähm, gesegnete Tote, die ähm, wird auferweckt werden an der ersten Ernte. When is the first harvest? Wann ist die erste Ernte? According to Matthew 24. Gemäß Matthäus 24. At the sign, right? Zeichen. So when the sign of the Son of Man comes, he sends his angels and they put in the sickle, right? Wenn das Zeichen des Menschensohnes kommt, dann sendet er seine Engel und sie werfen die Sichel ein. So, the 144,000 don't die, right? Und die 144,000 sterben ja nicht. So, for them, it's a deliverance from sin, right? Also für sie ist es eine Befreiung von Sünde. But the blessed dead, they're being resurrected from their literal death to stand with them, right? Die gesegneten Toten werden auferweckt von ihrem buchstäblichen Tod, um dann mit ihnen zu stehen. Right, uh, everybody see that? Kann das jeder sehen? Okay. And it says, and in their mouth was found no girl, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Where are they now standing? Wo stehen sie jetzt? Right, so if they're standing before the throne, what is it? Wenn sie vor dem Thron stehen, was ist das? Well, we often, uh, that might be true, but it's not really what we're talking about. What, if they're standing before the throne of God uh, and it's been complete, what's the purpose of the latter rain? Also, was ist der Zweck des Spätregens? Standing's presence. Yeah, so that you can stand in his presence, right? Du in seiner Gegenwart stehen kannst. And when you stand in his presence, what is it? Wenn du in seiner Gegenwart stehen kannst, was ist das? Which event is it? Welches Ereignis ist das? It's the final review. It's the exit. It's about to execute judgment, right? Ist die finale Untersuchung ist ja kurz davor, das Gericht auszuführen. He's separating two classes. One class, he says, enter thou into the joy of my, the Lord, and the other class, what happens to them? Er trennt diese zwei Klassen. Zu den einen sagt er, geht ein in die Freude eures Herrn, und zu den anderen, was geschieht mit ihnen? Yeah, they out of darkness, right? It's the execution of the judgment, right? Sie werden in äußere fin äußerste Finsternis geworfen. Das ist die Ausführung des Gerichts. Okay, look, just go back to Revelation 7. Geht noch mal zurück zu Offenbarung 7. I think it's... Um, no, no, it's in Revelation 6, right? Also es ist in Offenbarung 6. The last verse. Der letzte Vers. Verse 17. It says, for the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to what? To stand. Right? So his wrath comes at the end of the harvest, right? Right? But there's, we know that there's... This is the end of the first harvest, and this is the end of the second harvest, right? Das ist das Ende der ersten Ernte und das das Ende der zweiten Ernte. Okay. So, um, so, so who shall be able to stand? If you just go to Malachi, also it marks this point, right? Also, wenn wir zu Malachi gehen, das macht jetzt auch diesen Punkt. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi 3. Verse 1. It says, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Now, on October 22nd, 1844, the Lord suddenly came to his temple. Right? And October 22nd, 1844, in relation to the parable of the ten virgins, what was it? Und in Bezug auf ähm, das Gleichnis der zehn Jungfrauen, was war der 22. Oktober? Das Ende der Kranzeit. No, it's true, but in relation to the parable of the ten virgins. Also in Bezug auf das Gleichnis der zehn There's no harvest in the ten virgins. The ten virgins, what's, what's it? Mark October 22nd in relation to the ten virgins. Also, das ist ja keine Ernte bei right, thank you. It's the closed 
door, Sondern right? das ist die geschlossene Tür. Right? So stick with the right symbols, because there's many symbols that you can apply, right? So we're on the right track. Also wir müssen mit den richtigen Symbolen bleiben, aber äh, ja. Okay, so therefore, what was October 22nd prefiguring? Also deswegen, was hat der 22. Oktober vorausgeschaut? Right, if it's a closed door, right, it means that there's no more probation anymore, also right? Großen Tag seines Zorns und deswegen, wenn die Tür geschlossen ist, bedeutet das, dass es keine Gnadenzeit mehr gibt. And Sister White says that on October 22nd, the Lord suddenly came to his temple, right? Ellen White sagt, dass am 22. Oktober der Herr plötzlich zu seinem Tempel kam. So just let's continue to read here. Lesen wir weiter. The Lord whom ye see shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming, and who shall stand when he appeareth? Right, so what's it saying here? Also was sagt es hier? Who's going to stand when he appears? Wer wird right? stehen, wenn er ähm, erscheint? Okay, so... This, this is this point here, right, in uh, Revelation 14, verse 5. This is the point here in Offenbarung 14, verse 5. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God, right? So who shall be able to stand? And the ones that are standing are those that have the seal of God in their forehead, right? Wer wird in der Lage sein zu stehen? Und diejenigen, die stehen, haben das Siegel Gottes an ihren Stirn. Okay, right. So, um, so go to the next quote. Gehen wir zum nächsten Zitat. It says, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. How many classes? Wie viele Klassen? Two, two classes, right? Zwei Klassen. Okay, and um, <coughs> it says. It is at midnight that God manifests his power for the deliverance of his people. And this is speaking about the seventh plague, right? Hier über die siebte plague. Which has been prefigured here by the seventh trumpet. Right? Hier wird durch die siebte okay. Um, <coughs> it's at midnight that God manifests his power for the deliverance of his people. The sun appears shining in his strength. Signs and wonders follow in quick succession. The wicked look with terror and amazement upon the scene, while the righteous behold with solemn joy the tokens of their deliverance. What do they see? Was sehen Sie? Just say what it says, Maris. Uh, uh, you're not wrong, but it's the token. What's a token? Also die Zeichen. Was ist ein Zeichen? Token is a like a. If I give you a t token of my love, I'm giving you a portion of my love, right? Or a, 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 a foretaste. Yes, yes. Right. It's, like, it's like a promise, right? And so therefore, what, what is it referring to? The, the first fruits, right? The first fruits. The first fruits were the, the portion or the, the promise of what was about to come, right? It's the sign, right? The sign that he's coming, right? Okay, so with solemn joy, the tokens of their deliverance, right? Everything in nature seems turned out of its course, the streams... Cease to flow, dark heavy clouds come up and clash against each other in the midst of the angry heavens is one clear space of indescribable glory. Whence comes the voice of God, like the sound of many waters, saying, It is done. That's right here, right? And this is here, gerade here. Okay, at the end, right? Am end. That voice shakes the heaven and the earth, right? There is a mighty earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. The whole earth heaves and swells like the waves of the sea. Its surface is breaking up, its very foundations seem to be giving way. Graves are opened, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. So she takes Daniel 12 to and puts it 
at the seventh plague, right? Sie nimmt Daniel 12, Vers 2 und setzt es an die siebte Plage. It says, all who have died in the faith of the third angel's message come forth from the tomb glorified to hear the covenant of peace with those who have kept his law. Who are those that have kept his law? Das sind diejenigen, die sein Gesetz gehalten haben. The 144,000, right? Die 144.000. That's the point we've been talking about. They're resurrected to stand with the 144,000 who have the seal of God in their forehead, right? Sie wurden ja erweckt, um zu stehen mit den 144.000. Sie haben das Siegel Gottes an ihren Stirn. Yes. That's not what it says there. No, I'm not saying that's what it says. I'm saying that's what you said. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yes. Well, how can they be the 144,000 if they're resurrected to stand with the 144,000? <laughs> it doesn't say that's God. It well, says. That's what you said. No, just read no, what it didn't. says. No, yeah. it It says there, all who have died in the faith of the third angels who say, come forth from the tomb. Right. So that's, that's what, what, what is it there? That's those that are being resurrected, the blessed dead, yes. Also, okay, I said that, and you said, no, it's 144,000, so that's why I'm confused. No, I didn't say, you're not listening to what I'm saying. Let me finish the, let me finish the sentence, and then, you'll, then I'll remind you of what I said, right? It says, all who have died in the faith of the third angel's message come forth from the tomb glorified to hear God's covenant of peace with those who have kept his law. And I asked the question, who are those that kept his law? Okay. Right? Yes. And David answered correctly, the 144,000, right? Yes. 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 The 144,000 have the seal of God in their forehead, right? They are those that kept the law, right? Die 144,000 sind diejenigen, die das Siegel an ihren Stirn haben. Sie sind diejenigen, das Gesetz gehalten haben. And then it goes on. It says, those who had died in faith under the third angel's message, keeping the Sabbath, came forth from their dusty beds. They also, which pierced him, those that mocked and derided Christ's dying agonies and the most violent opposers of his truth and his people are raised to behold him in his glory and see the honor placed upon the loyal and obedient. So here's this, this ones that get resurrected to sh shame and contempt in Daniel, 2, uh, Daniel 12 2. Das sind jetzt diejenigen, die auferweckt werden zu ewiger Schande und Schmach in, also in Daniel 12, Vers 2. So, According to this, what are they resurrected for? It says, to hear God's covenant of peace with those who have kept his law, right? So they're resurrected to hear God's covenant of peace. So, those, those that... The, the blessed dead get the privilege of seeing Christ coming on the clouds, right? Die gesegneten Toten, die erhalten das Vorrecht, dass sie Christus auf den Wolken kommen sehen. Because these, these people, okay, let's just, um, let's just, um, okay. Go to, go to Revelation chapter 1. Go to Offenbarung 1. I can't remember where it is, but I think it's here. Yes. Verse 7. Offenbarung 1, verse 7. It says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him. So what's it referring to here? Also, was or, or should I say, this verse 7 here, where is it pointing to? Also, verse 7, of was was das hin? The special resurrection. The special resurrection. Why? Die Auferstehung und warum? Two classes. Two classes. There's two classes, right? And the, the ones that pierced him, right? Das sind zwei Klassen. 
und auch diejenigen, die ihn durchstochen haben. Okay, so, um, so if you just go to the next paragraph in that quote, it's the last one. Geht zum nächsten Absatz, in diesem Zitat, also zum letzten. It says, they also which pierced him, those that mocked and derided Christ's dying agonies, and the most violent opposers of his truth and his people, are raised to behold him in his glory, and to see the honor placed upon the loyal and obedient. So, they get to see Christ coming on the clouds. Right. Christ said to the Pharisees, the next time ye shall see me is when ye shall say, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Right? And, and where was that fulfilled? Und wo wurde das erfüllt? Not, not, not here, it's perfectly fulfilled here, but where was it fulfilled? Also, not here, also, but who was that fulfilled? Yes, the travel entry. They said, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the law. Right? Also, beim triumphalen Einzug, wo gesagt wurde, gesegnet ist, der kommt im Namen des Herrn. And the triumphal entry represents the second coming, right? Der triumphale Einzug stellt die Wiederkunft dar. Ever we follow? Okay, just bringing all, all these thoughts together, right? Also, wir müssen all diese Gedanken zusammenbringen. Okay, so now go to Revelation 14, verse 14. Gehen wir zu Offenbarung 14, Vers 14. So this this is now this harvest, right? This when he's to see him coming on the cloud. Das right? jetzt diese Ernte, wo sie ihn auf der Wolke kommen sehen. And I looked and behold a white cloud, and upon the cloud. One sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in the sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. Okay, so the question is, um, verse 15. Who's the angel in the temple? Also die Frage ist in Vers 15, wer ist der Engel im Tempel? Or just guessing, right? Okay, the point that I want to make, right? Sister White takes these verses and she applies them she applies them he, here at the seventh plague right but i made this argument before that these are actually applied to here right so at the end at the end here right this is the end of the day of atonement what does um, christ do Und hier am Ende, das ist das Ende des ähm, Versöhnungstages. Was macht Christus dort? The end of the day of atonement. What does Christ do? Okay. Day of atonement. Think him on the day of atonement now. What does he do? So denkt an den at Versöhnungstag. Was macht er am Ende? He puts the Put sins on the scapegoat, right? Also er macht die Sünden auf den Sünden. Okay, so... At the end of the seventh plague, what does she say he does? Und am Ende der siebten Plage, was sagt sie, was macht er da? Put the sins on the scapegoat. Right? Er macht die Sünden auf den Sündenbock. What about at the end of the seven thousand year? Und was ist mit um, am Ende des sieben tausendsten Jahr? Does the same. He, he burns the longest. That all the sins that he committed gets put on him, right? Dasselbe. Und ähm, Satan brennt dann am längsten und all die Sünden, die er begangen hat, werden auf ihn gesetzt. Okay, now this is my argument that confirms to me at least that, that this here is referring to these two harvests. Das ist mein Argument, dass dieser Punkt sich bezieht auf diese beiden Ernten. And she just takes those things like she takes the putting the sins on the scapegoat and applies it to here. Und sie nimmt diese Dinge wie auch die Sünden, die auf den Sündenbock gelegt werden und wendet es hierauf an. Okay, because Christ is still in the sanctuary. 
weil Christus right? noch immer im Heiligtum ist. Because verse 15. Vers 15. Another angel came out from the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time has come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Who does the reaping? Wer macht um, das Erben? Okay, just w w one second. Okay, yeah. Let's look at this, we'll come back to it. Go to Matthew 24 and verse 30. Gehen wir zu Matthäus 24 und Vers 30. Right. It says, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And the sign is him coming on the clouds. Right? Das Zeichen ist, dass er auf den Wolken kommt. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect. So he's sending his angels, right? Er sendet seine Engel. Go to Matthew 13, verse 39, which Ge is the parable of the wheat and the tares. Geht zu Matthäus 13 und Vers 39, das ist das Gleichnis von Weizen und Unkraut. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. So what do the angels do? Was machen die Engel? They reap. Die right? Okay, now go to John chapter 4. Geht ihr zu Johannes 4. Verse 35. Vers 35. Say not ye there are yet four months, and then cometh the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And he that what? Reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto eternal life, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying true, one soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor. Right? So who are the reapers? Also wer sind die um, Schnitter? As people, right? Sein Volk. And in this sense, who in this story here, who was being reaped? And in dieser Geschichte, wer wurde um, geerntet? The Samaritan woman. Yeah, die samaritische Frau. Which is Cornelius. Und die auch Cornelius ist. Right? And Cornelius was a first fruit. Und Cornelius war eine Erstlingsfrucht. Right? So when, when they are sent forward here to reap, right, it's marking... The first fruits, right? Also, wenn sie hier vorwärts gesandt werden, um zu ernten, markiert das die Erstlingsfrucht. So, when you go back now to Revelation 14, <lacht> wenn wir zurückgehen jetzt zu Offenbarung 14, Vers 14, Vers 14, And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. It's the sign, right? Das ist das Zeichen. What is the sign? Was ist das Zeichen? <laughs> it's the sign of Jonah the prophet, right? It's the only sign he says he's going to give. Right? What is the sign of Jonah the prophet? Right, so they've come out of the belly here and they are now reaping. Right? Right, because they, they are like Jonah, they're filled with the Power of the Holy Spirit, right? Sie sind dann wie Jonah, sie sind erfüllt mit der Kraft des Heiligen Geistes. Okay, so the verse 15, the angel that's directing them in the sanctuary is Christ. Also Vers right? 15, der Engel, der sie, der ihn führt, das ist, oder ihn äh, sagt, was er zu tun hat, das ist Christus. Okay. So, and he gives the command, he says, another angel came out of the temple crying with a what? A loud voice. Also right. mit einer lauten Stimme. To him that sat on the cloud, thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So Christ is now the one commanding the earth, the, the harvest is ripe, and he that sat on the cloud, thrust in his sickle and the earth, and the earth was reaped. So the one on the cloud obeyed the voice of God. Right? Also, um, Christus ist derjenige, der befiehlt, die Ernte ist jetzt reif und der Engel, der auf der Wolke war, ähm, der hat dem Befehl von der Stimme Gottes gehorcht. Okay. And if you just go to Revelation 14, Vers 17. Und wenn ihr jetzt zur Offenbarung 14, Vers 17 geht. It brings you to the second harvest, right? Das bringt dich zur zweiten Ernte. Okay. And another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven. He also 
having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire. Who is that? Verse 18. Wer ist das in Vers 18? Where is he coming from? Woher kommt er? What does it say? From it altar. comes from the altar, right? It comes from altar. Right, so who's the angel that comes from the altar, which has power over fire and cries with a loud cry? Also, wer ist ähm, der Engel, der vom Altar kommt und Kraft oder Macht über das Feuer hat und mit einer lauten Stimme ruft? It's Christ, Christ right? This is Christ. Just quickly go to, go to Revelation 8. Read kurz zur Offenbarung 8. Verse 3. It says, and another angel came and stood at the altar. Who is this? It's Christ, right? He's the one that's given the commands. And this angel here in verse 18. And another angel came out from the altar which had power over fire and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle saying thrust in thy sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth for our grapes are fully ripe. So he's the one in the sand, he's giving the commands, right? And the angel thrust in a sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God, right? So it's marking all the wicked being cast into outer darkness. Right? Okay, because it says in Revelation 15, verse 1, And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. Right? So these two, the, the harvest is initially marked in the Sunday law crisis, right? Right. It's the end of the world. Right? Okay. But it's prefiguring the seventh plague, which is prefiguring the final thousand years, right? Okay, so you have two harvests, two harvests. Two harvests, right? Also, man hat zwei Ernten, zwei Ernten und auch hier zwei Ernten. Right. First resurrection are the, the, the righteous, second resurrection are those that are going to be cast into the lake of fire. Die erste Auferstehung sind die Gerechten und die zweite Auferstehung diejenigen, die in den Feuersee geworfen werden. And that's what Revelation 14 is, is illustrated, right? Und das stellt Offenbarung 14 dar. Okay, so... I think it was very purposeful that we we went over that again. Um, the second resurrection from Revelation 14. Is it and Satan began with the tears, right? Or one of the fourteen is a Satan der dann um diese Das Unkraut sammelt und seine Engel. Yes, but it says in the parable, take him, hand, bind him hand and foot and cast him into outer darkness, right? In dem Gleichnis sagt es, binde ihm Hand und Füße und werfe ihn in äußerste Finsternis. So it says in verse 17, it came out of the temple, which is in heaven. Yes. In the verse 17 sagt es aber, dass yes. der Engel aus dem Tempel kommt, der im Himmel war. Yes, what about it? Still his people. Immer noch sein Volk. God's people are always connected with it. Gottes Volk ist ja immer damit verbunden. He is. When Christ comes, he brings Satan and his angels with him, right? No, that's not Satan coming out of the temple. That's his people coming out of the temple. Also, das ist nicht Satan, der aus dem Tempel kommt, sondern sein Volk. God's people are the ones that are given the commands to, to Satan. You're, I don't know why you're looking at that like that. They're always together, right? Who's always together? 
God's people and the wicked. Gottes Volk und die Bösen. They're all standing side by side. Sie stehen immer Seite an Seite. Okay, same as right now in this room there will, there will be good angels and evil angels. So wie auch hier gerade in diesem Zimmer, da gibt es gute Engel und böse Engel. And those evil angels can do nothing unless the good angels allow them. Und die bösen Engel können nichts tun, als dass It's not saying that, I keep saying that to you, it's referring to God's people. God's people are the ones that are riding the ass. They loose the, the, the evil angels to do a bidding, right? Also der, der aus dem Tempel kommt, ist dann Gottes Volk und sie reiten ja den Esel und... Ähm, no, okay, I'm not talking about prophetically, right? I'm, This is a prophetic illustration, right? They're not literally in the temple. Also das ist eine prophetische Darstellung, die sind nicht buchstäblich im Tempel. Like when Lord says to Rome, for instance, it's my army. Right? Yes. It's like God is righteous, but it's not literally his army, it's Satan's army, but it's like his, he fulfills his purposes. Yes. So wie wenn der Herr ähm, zu Rom, also zu Rom sagt, dass, ähm, das ist meine Armee, und, ähm, also ja, nicht buchstäblich also seine Armee, aber er benutzt sie für seine Zwecke. Okay, just to clarify this point, just go to Jeremiah 51. Also um den Punkt zu klären, gehen wir zu Jeremia 51. It says, verse 19. Jeremia 51, Vers 19. It says, The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance, the Lord of hosts is his name. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war, for with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms, and with thee I will break in pieces the horse and his rider, and with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider, and with thee also will I break in pieces men and women, and with thee will I break in pieces old and young, and with thee will I break in pieces the young man and, and the, the maid. I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd and his flock, and with thee will I break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke of oxen, and with thee will I break in pieces captain and rulers. And I will render unto Babylon and to all the inhabitants of Chaldea all their evil that they have done in Zion in your sight, saith the Lord. So, do they do that? God's people punishing Babylon? Bestraft Gottes Volk Babylon? Okay, only, not physically, right? Okay, but they are the ones that he is using they they give the, the prophetic commands and Satan and his angels are the ones that carry it out right sind diejenigen die er benutzt sie geben die prophetischen befehle und aber satan und seine engel sind diejenigen die das ausführen okay Lawrence made this point right sorry just don't want us to not get this point go to revelation 1 in verse 1 also geht noch mal zur offenbarung 1 in vers 1 there's a chain of command right das ist eine befehlskette so, there's a voice in heaven speaks to God's people, and then God's people will will carry out the the prophetic um, message, right? Also, eine Stimme aus dem Himmel, sie befiehlt dann Gottes Volk, und Gottes Volk, sie sprechen dann diese prophetische Botschaft aus. It says the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him. Who gave it unto Jesus? Wer hat es Jesus gegeben? The Father, right? Der Vater. To show unto his servants. The things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. So it went from the Father to Christ to the angel Gabriel and then to his servant John. Right? And then from John it's to go to the angels of the Seven churches. Johannes soll es dann zu den Engeln an die sieben Gemeinden gehen. And then the angels of the seven churches is to go to the churches. Und die Engel der sieben Gemeinden, die sollen es dann weitergeben an die Gemeinden. So you can see there's a constant chain of command 
been, been passed up, also right? da können wir sehen, wie eine beständige Befehlskette weitergegeben wird. So in Revelation 14, you're just seeing part of that chain of command. You're hearing Christ speak and those that are uh, become now these uh, anointed ones acting out the, the commands. Also in Offenbarung 14 können wir dann einen Teil dieser Befehlskette sehen. Also Christus, er ähm, befiehlt, also er spricht und diejenigen, die jetzt ähm, die Gesalbten darstellen, sie ähm, ähm, führen es dann aus. Right, everybody follow the logic. <coughs> Kann jeder der Logik folgen? So, it's just important, because the harvest, we've been looking at over and over lately, always at the seventh plate, but really the first place we see the harvest is here in the type, right? Das ist wichtig, weil wir haben uns ja die Ernte hier in der siebten Plage immer angeschaut, aber wenn man sich das genau anschaut, dann bezieht sie sich eigentlich hier also okay, auf, den good. Typ, auf den Typ. Because Christ is still in the sanctuary. Weil Christus right? ist noch immer im Heiligtum. Okay, right. Let's close with Lass uns mit Gebet abschließen. Wir danken dir, dass wir nochmal durch dieses Thema über die Ernten hindurchgehen konnten. And, um, as we it now, please, um, it to our minds more fully. Und wenn wir das jetzt wiederholt haben, bitte entfalte es uns unserem Verstand noch völliger. That we can, um, see even more in it. Dass wir sogar noch mehr Dinge darin sehen können. And, um, that you would confirm all the thoughts that we have already that are correct. Und dass du alle Gedanken bestätigst, die wir schon haben, ähm, wenn sie richtig sind. Where they are correct. Also, wo, wo, sie ja, wo sie richtig sind. But uh, uh, if there's any misunderstanding still on our part, that you would also show this. Und wenn da irgendwelche Missverständnisse von unserem Teil sind, dann, dass du es uns auch zeigst. But the pattern we have now is very plain, very clear and true. Und das Muster, was wir jetzt gerade haben, ist sehr klar und ähm, ja, sehr wahr. And we ask you, Lord, that you would um, therefore help us now to search your word to find more uh, stories that uh, fit in this pattern. Und bitte hilf uns jetzt, dass wir dein Wort durchforschen und dass wir noch mehr Geschichten haben, die diesem Muster dann ähm, hineinpassen. And I also want to ask you that you help us in, on this preparation day. Und ich möchte auch bitten, dass du uns an diesem Vorbereitungstag hilfst. As we come to the seventh day soon. Wenn wir bald zu diesem siebten Tag ankommen. And that we would see it as a type for this uh, seventh plague. Und dass wir das als Typus der siebten Plage betrachten. And we would make right preparations that you can harvest us. Und dass wir richtige Vorbereitungen treffen können, dass du uns ernten kannst. And we ask and pray these things in Jesus' name. Und wir bitten und beten diese Dinge in Jesu Namen. Amen. Amen. Amen.